Okay, so the first thing we'll want to do for this problem is draw a diagram of the forces acting on the car. So here's the road, here are the wheels, and I'm going to draw the diagram so that the car is like facing us. Just because that'll make it easier to represent the forces. So here's the car, and here's kind of the windshield. I'm not very good at drawing cars. But anyway, there are three forces acting on the car, as far as we know. There is the weight acting downwards, which is equal to the mass times the gravitational acceleration. And the normal force acts upwards, force normal. And then there is a force of friction acting on to one side of the car as it's turning the curve. So the force from the friction. Now because the car is rounding a curve, there is a centripetal force acting with the car in the horizontal direction. And the only force we have that's on the horizontal axis is the force from friction. So we can assume that the radial force on the car, the radial force, is equal in magnitude to the frictional force. One way to think of it is that the radial force is being caused by the frictional force. So let's expand this out. The radial force has a formula where it's equal to the mass times the square of the speed divided by the radius of curvature. And the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of friction, in this case the coefficient of static friction, times the normal force. The reason why we're dealing with the coefficient of static friction here is because of the problem telling us that we're looking for the maximum speed. Remember, at the maximum possible speed, the car is going to be just barely teetering on the verge of slipping, which means the static friction will be at its maximum possible value. So in order to find the maximum speed, we need to set this equation equal to the static friction and then solve for that. So another thing we need to do to expand this out is we don't have the normal force, but we can see from our diagram that the normal force is only being countered by the weight of the car. And since there is no vertical acceleration of the car, as far as we know, we can assume that the normal force is equal to the weight, or mg. So this part of the equation, mu sub s times mg. So the final equation we're going to be solving is mv squared over r equals mu sub s mg. Now the m's can cancel out because it's on both sides of the equation. And we're left with v squared over r equals mu sub s g. And we want to solve for the speed as we established earlier. So we're algebraically solving for speed. So we multiply both sides of the equation by r. So v squared equals mu sub s r g. And then we solve for v by taking the square root of both sides. So v is equal to, to mu sub s rg, all underneath a square root. So all we got to do now is plug in the values that were given to us in the problem. So the square root of the coefficient of static friction, which is given as 0.65, so that is 0.65 times the radius of curvature, which is given as 90 meters, times the gravitational acceleration, 9.8 meters per second. Put all this into a calculator, we get a speed of about 24 meters per second. So that is the answer to the first part of the problem, but the problem also asks, is this result independent of the mass of the car? And well, we, we can see from our final equation, the final equation that we used, it does not have an m in it. That final speed does not have anything to do with the mass of the car. So the result is independent of the car's mass. And so that is it for this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing as that'll help me out in making more videos just like this. And if you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below. And I hope you all have a lovely night. Bye-bye.